Hey guys, so a ton of new polling data has just been released for the 2022 midterm elections in the key states of New Hampshire, Nevada, Georgia, and Arizona. And all of these new polls show that the Democratic Party has a significant advantage going into these elections that we are all the way in the month of July, just four months before the midterm elections. And if you look at these polling numbers, they continue to cement the fact that the Democratic Party is seeing huge increases in their support as voter morale among the Democratic base is higher than it has been since the election of Joe Biden. And a lot of this is due to the abortion issue, as well as just the fact that the Democratic base is going to want to turn out because of just how terrible many of the Republican nominees are. And many independents in the key races are most likely now going to actually vote for the Democrats just because of the abysmal nominations that the GOP has put up. The people that the GOP has nominated in these midterm elections, especially on the Senate level, are simply not electable in these statewide races. And if you look at a state like Arizona, Mark Kelly now is actually favored to win his Senate election for the first time in over a year. And objectively, Mark Kelly is the best candidate that the Democrats have up for re-election this November in a key race. If you look at the numbers here in Arizona, just over the last couple of days, Mark Kelly's numbers have jumped from 46 all the way up to 50 now and this means that Mark Kelly is now favored to win his first full six-year term. You go back just a couple of months, 63% chance that this state flips and now the GOP is all the way below the Democrats at just 48. So these numbers obviously are terrible for the Republican Party and this is a trend you can see in every single major race that we have this November on the Senate level. The Democratic Party, according to the betting markets now, are actually favored to win 51 seats after these midterms. If you look at the 2022 Senate map here, six toss-up races that are truly states that could go to either party. Yes, Ohio and North Carolina could also be classified as toss-up races. However, the GOP has a very significant advantage in those races. The Democrats can still win, but in these six races, the states of New Hampshire, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada, these really are the six states that both parties have a very good chance of winning. And if you go back just a couple of weeks ago, the GOP was favored to win in five out of these six races. The GOP was expected to win in the states of Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada, that would mean three flips for the GOP in a total of 53 seats. However, today, the Democrats are now expected to flip Pennsylvania and hold on to Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada. So these numbers obviously are very good for the Democrats, the numbers that we've been seeing very lately. And so in this video too, today, we'll be taking a look at the races in which polls have just recently come out of. And just to show you guys that these numbers are very fitting of the overall trend that the Democratic Party is going up over at least the last couple of days here. So starting off with the state of Arizona, Mark Kelly leads by 9% over Blake Masters, according to this change research poll. And yes, change research does favor the Democrats. It is sponsored by Future Majority, which is a sponsor for the Democratic Party. However, change research's average bias is 3% to the left. So even if you adjusted all of these polls, they all show Democrats ahead. Head. Mark Kelly here is ahead by nine points over Blake Masters, and he is honestly in a very good position to win his re-election at this point in time, considering how close his race really is. If you look at the 2020 special election in Arizona where Mark Kelly won his election, he won this race by 2.4%. It was a very solid margin for the Democrats in this state. The Democratic Party after 2020 had two Democratic senators, and in 2022, Mark Kelly is running for re-election to make sure that it stays that way. And so looking at the Republican primary, Blake Masters at this point has an 80% chance of winning the GOP nomination. He recently did get the endorsement of Donald Trump and currently, according to the latest polls, has 29% support. That is enough for him to end up winning. And if you look at the undecided voters here, most of them will so likely go to Blake Masters. Of course, previously you did see Jim Lamont and Mark Bronovich both as the frontrunners. However, this race really has developed a lot. The primary is not 
in over a month, so we still do have a lot of time to wait. However, looking at just the polling numbers here, it will be a struggle for the GOP no matter who is nominated, because according to these early polls, Mark Kelly is leading by double digits in a lot of these potential matchups, and especially against Blake Masters, this is the big one. Blake Masters is yet to reach 40% in a single poll that has been released in the state of Arizona. And that is the big reason why he is now expected to lose the Senate election in Arizona. Blake Masters is actually not that terrible of a candidate. If you compare him to many of the other GOP candidates nationwide, Blake Masters is very okay. He does not have that many radical views, even though he did get the endorsement of Donald Trump. He is still in the Trump wing of the Republican Party, but that really does not mean that he is that terrible of a candidate. So in the state of Arizona, a state that has voted Republican in so many elections over the last couple of decades, it has not really flipped blue until very recently. In a year like 2022, the GOP still has a very good chance here. However, as of right now, the latest polling does suggest a significant lead in favor of Mark Kelly, and that really is going to drive the Democrats' odds of winning these midterms up a whole ton just because Mark Kelly was at one point expected to be one one of the most vulnerable Democratic incumbents running. Now, moving on to the state of Nevada, another big race for the Democrats. Now, they are not really doing as well here as the other races that we're going to take a look at. But in the state of Nevada, Catherine Cortez Masto, in the polling average, leads by 0.9%. She, of course, is running for re-election this year to a second full term. And looking at all of the recent polls between her and Adam McSalt, Adam McSalt is the confirmed GOP nominee at this point. He won his, no she, he won his nomination. And so according to the latest poll, Catherine Cortez as Masto leads by 3%. According to a previous poll from late last month, Catherine Cortez Masto led by 21%. The last poll that Adam McSalt led in was one where he led by 1% all the way in April, and this one was funded by a Republican partisan sponsor. And before that, the last independent poll that McSalt led in was all the way in early April, where Adam McSalt led by 3%. That was three months ago at this point. And so the numbers are not looking good here for Luxalt. And if you look at the odds that Luxalt has of winning this race, it is even worse. Looking at the numbers here, Adam Luxalt now has just a 55% chance of winning. When the markets closed yesterday, Luxalt's numbers were at 51, Masso's were at 46. I mean, these numbers are abysmal for the GOP. If you look at just a couple of days back, I mean, in mid-June, they had a 63, 64% chance of winning the race. Catherine Cortez Masto was all the way down at 37. And now this race is basically even. And a big cause of this is the fact that Adam McSalt has a very unpopular view on abortion in the state of Nevada. The state of Nevada is the number one most pro-abortion state in the country, and I'm sure you can imagine why. And in terms of their abortion rate, their abortion rate is one of the highest in the country, despite only having seven facilities that can actually perform abortions. And so the new Supreme Court ruling, obviously that was going to help the Democrats anyways, but Adam Luxalt says that it's sad that Nevada protects abortion rights, and that is going to hurt him. Adam Luxalt has been very supportive of Roe v. Wade being overturned. He has repeatedly attacked the initial ruling and is also supporting many other rulings that have just come out of the Supreme Court that shows just how much of the right the highest court has moved. So Adam Luxalt's stances on the Supreme Court rulings is making him very unpopular in the state of Nevada, and that is greatly hurting his campaign in a state that heavily favors the right to an abortion, the right to choose, and Catherine Cortez Masto is really highlighting this issue, and if she is able to do that well, she may actually end up winning a second full term in Congress, even though right now the GOP still has a slight advantage, but really 55-46 is nothing. 55-46 is a coin toss. At this point in time, this race is basically even. The GOP does not really have any sort of significant advantage, and yes, that is the same thing, of course, in Arizona, but just comparing it to the numbers that we saw for the Democrats a couple of months ago, I mean, these numbers are significant because they went from being basically expected to lose to now being in very good contention for these races. So in the state of Nevada, the GOP does still have a slight advantage, at least according to 
the betting odds here but if you do look at the polling as well as the 538 forecast the democrats are actually expected to win so right now in the state of arizona i'm going to categorize it as being tilt for the democrats and now moving on to the state of New Hampshire, we're going to go over the New Hampshire and then, of course, the big race in the state of Georgia. But in the state of New Hampshire, the latest poll shows Maggie Hassan up nine points against Donald Bulldo. Now, currently, it is unclear as to who is going to win the GOP nomination here in New Hampshire. Of course, the Democrats are going to end up renominating Maggie Hassan. In 2016, she had a very impressive victory. This was the smallest margin of victory in any state, in any Senate election in 2016 when Donald Trump was elected president. However, six years ago, Maggie Hassan defeated Republican incumbent Kelly A. Yacht. This was a big win for the Democratic Party. And in these midterm elections, Maggie Hassan is likely to face Donald Bulldo or Chuck Morse. So Donald Bulldo is a former Brigadier General and Chuck Morse is the president of the New Hampshire Senate. So both of them very well known in the state. The latest poll shows 33% for Donald Bulldo. However, I'm sure that is highly inaccurate. But as of this point in time, Chuck Morris has a very good chance of winning this race. His odds are much higher than Donald Bulldo's. But really, we're just going to have to see here and what happens in the primary in a couple of weeks. But if you look at the betting odds for this race, Magnia Saw now has a 63% chance of winning. And this latest poll showing her up 9% is one of the big reasons as to why. Abortion will also help her with the Supreme Court ruling. Her numbers did go up slightly after that, but... This new poll really suggests just how terrible of a position the GOP is in here in the state of New Hampshire. At one point, this race was actually expected to go to the Republicans. They were actually favored to win this race. And I still do agree, New Hampshire can still get very close. I do think, though, that Maggie Hassan is not going to have too much trouble. I don't think it's going to be like 2016, where this is the closest Senate race of the year. I do think Maggie Hassan will end up winning at least by one percentage point this November, even though, obviously, she is still very vulnerable just because of the national environment still a little bit favoring the GOP. So looking at these numbers here, the Democrats' odds in New Hampshire are better than they have ever been in the last year or so. And so this, you know, also obviously continues to show that the Democratic Party's numbers have been improving a lot. If you look at the GOP against Maggie Yassan, there's only been one poll between any of the two frontrunners, Donald Bulldo or Chuck Morse, that shows either of them leading over the incumbent. And that was one poll released in early April with Chuck Morse up 2% over Maggie Hassan. And so according to the latest poll, Maggie Hassan is now up 9%. And even if you're just that for the average 3% bias for the Democrats... Maggie Hassan still leads by 9%, and I mean, the polls in New Hampshire are not that inaccurate. The polls in New Hampshire are relatively accurate. They were on the presidential level and on the Senate level for Jean Shaheen in 2020. So right now, in the state of New Hampshire, the Democratic Party obviously has a slight advantage going into this race, even though I think that it is a clear advantage at this point in time. And so, finally, in the state of Georgia, where Raphael Warnock is fighting for his re-election, this is going to be probably the biggest race of the year, because in 2021, when he was elected in the special runoff election, I mean, this was a big deal. When he was elected alongside John Ossoff into the Senate just early last year, he made it so that the Democrats held both Senate seats in the state of Georgia in almost a century. And so Raphael Warnock is also the first African-American senator from the state of Georgia, despite Georgia having one of the highest African-American populations in the country. So in 2022, he faces a very tough re-election against Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker, of course, is a very well-known football player in the state, and he really did pose a very strong challenge to the Democratic incumbent. However, it has been clear Clear now, it is clear at this point that Herschel Walker is not a good candidate in this race. He just has said too many nonsensical things, too many views that just don't align with this state. The state of Georgia is a very moderate state as a whole. Of course, there are very many radicals in the state. Marjorie Taylor Greene is from the state of Georgia, for example, but still as a whole, the state of Georgia is very much in the middle. And Ralph A. Warnock does a much better job at pandering to independents than Herschel Walker. The only thing going for Walker at this point is Democratic unpopularity nationwide. But if the GOP makes the Supreme Court a big issue, if they continue to to support the new Roe v. Wade decision, that is going to hurt their overall popularity in 
the na in the country as a whole because obviously most people are pro-choice and so if you look at the polling numbers here between Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker the numbers are abysmal for the GOP. Herschel Walker has not led in a Georgia poll since leading by 10 points according to this GOP funded one all the way back in early April. There was a campaign poll from Herschel Walker. I mean, so if you look at the polls here, there are obviously the most independent polls where there's no diamond. If you look at the diamond that is colored in, this means that it is sponsored by a partisan sponsor for either party. And if you look at the diamond that is not filled in the campaign polls, I mean, these are the most skewed results you will get in these campaign polls. The candidate that funds it the numbers are expected to be skewed to them significantly. And according to this poll that was funded by the Walker campaign, it showed that the race was even. So Herschel Walker did not even lead in a poll that he himself funded. And according to this latest poll, Raphael Warnock is up 10 points. And the bad thing here for the GOP is that the state of Georgia, the polls here are relatively accurate. They were very accurate in the runoff elections in the Senate in the last election. And they were very accurate for Joe Biden as well. Joe Biden was expected to win the state of Georgia by a very slight margin. And so the polls in Georgia really are only off by 1%, 1 1.5 percentage points maximum. They're really only off by a couple tenths of a percentage point. And so Raphael Warnock leading by a very small margin is still very significant because it's not like another state where in Arizona Mark Kelly may have been pulling much better in 2020 but only ended up winning by a very small margin so if you look at a state like Arizona in 2020 Mark Kelly was leading by much larger than the 2% margin that he saw in the very end so the state of Arizona so in the state of Georgia I mean the polling numbers are pretty accurate and so this is making the race in Georgia an absolute nightmare for the GOP because they had been supporting Herschel Walker since the very beginning, basically right after Raphael Warnock was elected. And if you look at the betting odds here, the Democrats have a 54% chance of holding on to their Senate seat in Georgia, just 47 for the GOP. And again, this is the best that the Democrats have done in over a year. For the first time since the very early days of the Biden presidency, Raphael Warnock now is expected to win his Senate race, at least according to the betting odds here. And yes, Herschel Walker is pro-life and so that is also going to hurt him in the state of Georgia, which also has a very high abortion rate. The abortion rate in Georgia is very similar to that to the rate in Nevada, and this is all according to 2020 numbers. So the Democratic Party, I think it's going to continue to see better numbers here in the state of Georgia. And so as of right now, they also have a very slight advantage in this race. And I mean, if you want to take a look at more Senate polls, if you want to look at all of the polls that have been released from the state of Pennsylvania between Mehmet Oz and John Fetterman, I mean, just look at the numbers here, even better for the Democrats than a lot of the other races. John Fetterman has led by four, six, nine, and two percentage points in the four polls between him and Mehmet Oz. Of course, one of them is all the way back in December. However, according to these three, three independent polls just from earlier last month. Big leads for the lieutenant governor of Pennsylvania. And if you also want to look at Wisconsin, the final real toss-up state on the map that we have had there. If you look at the numbers here, the Democratic frontrunner Mandela Barnes leads by two points over Ron Johnson in the really the only poll that's released for this election cycle in the state of Wisconsin. So as of right now, the Democratic Party is in a very good position. I'm not going to go over these two states, but at least according to the latest numbers in the four close races with Democratic incumbents, the states of Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, and New Hampshire, the Democratic Party is looking like they're getting into a better and better position going into these midterm elections, which are now just four months away. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like it down below if you enjoyed it. Comment down below how you think Democrats are doing in these midterms. Subscribe to my channel if you have not, and I'll see you guys in the next one.